Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a new show on MNTB, um, Do's and Don'ts of Islam. Um, I'm the, your host, Fatma Sam, and today we have with us Asmat. And what our show is mainly about is we have like many topics about Islam, and we tell you the right way, which is the do, and the wrong way, which you're not supposed to do, but yeah, that sounded weird, um, which is the don't. And what we do is, yeah, that's what uh, we give you this information just to learn it and, you know, get it in your head so the next time you do one of these, you know how not to do it. So, um, during our show, if you have any questions, feel free to call us. Um, let's get started. When remembering Allah. Um, whenever you remember Allah, try to remember Him with your heart and tongue. That means, you know... When anything good or bad happens to you, always remember him by either saying um, with your heart, that means you know you keep Allah in your heart and you know you feel happy um, and always remember Allah in your heart. Or, um, you know, when with your tongue, by saying Alhamdulillah or Bismillah, that's remembering Allah too. So, yeah. Um, when remembering Allah, don't say Allah's name loudly when you are in the bathroom because it's an unclean and filthy place to say his name. Um, so, um, when saying your du'as and supplications to Allah, your do is know that Allah has the ability to, to answer you, to answer your du'as and supplications, and that Allah can hear you. So when you're doing your du'as and supplications, always remember that even when you're in either good situation or bad situation, always remember that Allah's with you and He can hear you. Always remember that because when you remember that, you know, um, you like, you're like, you're not, you're really confident in yourself, and you have a feeling that you know your diets, inshallah, will get, um, you will be listened to. You know, Allah's always there for you, and you know when something bad's happening to you, you always know that you'll be okay because you're remembering Allah when you make a du'a or supplication. So that's your due. Um, when you say du'a to Allah, don't pray against your family or relatives because sometimes it can come true. And Allah listens to your du'a, so don't pray against them. Like, say that um, you want to, like, I don't know, something bad to happen to them. Because sometimes when that happens, you feel like you know that that's what you wanted, but then you feel bad about it. So, yeah. um, next, when performing your wudu, always, you know, purify your intention before you make wudu and say bismillah. Of course not if you're in the bathroom, don't say bismillah because, you know, you can't say Allah's name in the bathroom. But always, like, you know, remember that or say it in your head. Um, say bismillah before, of course, you start anything and especially wudu so you can, you know, purify it and make it even better than it is. So always remember that. Um, when you're doing wudu, don't waste your don't waste the water when you're doing wudu because like that means kind of like whenever you're pulling up your sleeves to wash your arms or something, don't waste that water at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you pay attention to you know your when you're performing your prayer and your salah, you know um, focus on what you're doing. You know like at the mosque when you pray sometimes and the sheikh is reading Quran. Your, your mind is kind of, you know, the shaitan does this to everybody, but, you know, try your best to keep your on focus because, you know, sometimes um, when you're praying, you're, you know, in your head, you're like, I wonder what we're going to eat tonight for dinner or I wonder what we're going to do at school tomorrow. Oh, my God, that big test I have tomorrow, it's going to be so hard. So, you know, um, always try to keep yourself, you know, focused on the Quran, focused on your prayers so, you know, you don't get confused and all this stuff. Um, when praying, don't look up at the ceiling or like the sky. Just look like straight down when you're praying. That way you don't like go and think of some, or remember something. Just look down when you're praying. Yeah, because you know, sometimes you like hear a sound and then you like turn your head all the way around. You're like, what was that when you're praying? So um, next, um, when you're paying your obligatory charity or zakat, you know, um, you know, okay, charity, zakat is something you have to do. You have to pay your zakat. Um, when you pray your zakat, pay the zakat every year to purify your wealth, to obey Allah's command, and to please Allah. Um, when you pray, 
when you pay your zakat every month, you know, you should be, or every year, because, you know, it's one of the five pillars, you have to pay it and, you you know, feel good about your paying it because, you know, you're pleasing Allah and, you know, be happy because, you know, Allah's pleased with you and that's the best thing you could want in your life, just to be pleased by Allah. So, always be happy when you're paying your zakat and, you know, that's going for something good. When you're paying zakat, don't give charity with the atten- intention of showing off your wealth. So, like, whenever they are, like, doing a fundraiser or something and they want you to donate, like, a certain amount of money or something, don't, like, uh, make sure, like, everybody's watching you. That way you can, like, like, uh, like show off that you're rich or whatever. When you want to put something in the donation box, don't, like, wait until somebody looks at you to do it. Just do it for the sake of Allah. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot because, like, you know, sometimes we go to the mosque and, like, they're like, um, who wants to donate um, $1,000 to this organization? And people are like, uh, we don't want to donate. But then when it comes to, like, $10,000 and nobody wants to donate, somebody will, like, randomly raise their hand, I'll do it. And then, you know, they show off about your wealth. It's good to keep um, your paying your charity, you know, it's kind of secret. And just do it just because you want to and not because you want to show off how much money you have. So that's a good thing. Um, when praying in the mosque or masjid, always straighten up your rows. Um, you know, pray in a group and, you know, turn off your phones, of course. And, like, keep your your feet to the, like, keep it side by side to the other person's feet. And your shoulders next to the other person's shoulders, you know, because... You know, sometimes the shaitan can kind of get in between and kind of mess you up while you're praying. And, like, you know, don't, like, (laughs) when you're, like, sometimes I see this, when you're, like, praying, you, like, stretch out your feet all the way wider. You keep them so tiny close together. So, like, you know, um, you know, sometimes just fix up your rows. And, of course, you know, everybody has a cell phone these days. So always remember to turn it off because what if you have that, you know, little funny ringtone and while you're praying it kind of just goes on randomly <laughs> and then you know it could be any kind of music or anything and it, you know first of all not only that you're distracting everybody and everybody turns around and looks at you and then not only that you can't stop yours a lot to turn off your phone so what are you gonna do so always remember to turn off your phone <laughs> um when you're praying in the mosque don't let your children run ar- like don't let any children run around freely because sometimes they'll run in front of the kids that are uh i mean the people that are praying and sometimes they'll like climb on their mom's back or their dad's back <laughs> or whatever in the middle of prayer <laughs> and they might like get hurt so don't let that happen yeah i see that sometimes the little kids like well because a lot of people used to do that my little sisters did that to me one time when i was praying um What they do is like, you know, when you're praying and you go to make, um, you go down, um, they go and you know, they climb on your backs and you can't get up. So you can't hit them or do anything to take them off. So, you know, always make sure the kids are somewhere safe, but not in the prayer room when you're, when everybody's praying. Um, so next, when you're reading Quran, you do have to contemplate the words that you are reading and try to beautify your recitation. Um, make sure you read Surah Al-Kahf on Fridays, Jama'ah prayers. Um, when you read Quran, you don't say, say like, you always, you know, have a, try to have a great recitation and, you know, try to understand, try to understand the words you're saying because, you know, they have a great meaning and that's the reason Allah gave us the Quran so, you know, you can know what you're saying and, you know, when you read it, Try to make it sound the best you can when you're reading it. And try to understand what the words say. And also, um, if you guys didn't know this, um, every Friday's reading Surah to, um, Gaf, Allah, um, the, the week you're on, and also the week that's coming up, He lightens up your week, you know, makes you all happy, makes everything go good for you. So just reading, you know, Surah to Gaf every Friday's, that's, that's a great week. So you'll have the next week all lightened up for you and have a happy week um so. when reading the quran don't make it a rule to read the quran only in ramadan just because the gates are open for ramadan like i mean the gates of jannah just because they're open to ramadan doesn't mean that's the only time you read it because reading one um 
letter, I think, gives you 10 hasanats. So, like, that's, like, an easy way to get hasanats is reading Quran. Like, one word will give you, like, 30 hasanats. So, that's just, like, an easy way of doing it. Don't only read Quran in Ramadan. Yeah. So, um, when interacting with a group of Muslims, you know, of course, we interact with Muslims a lot. Um, like, we go to the mosque every week, Fridays, we interact with Muslims, we talk to Muslims. Um, we have friends, we interact with Muslims. And also, um, like, interacting, like, as a group, we have, of course, um, every Sundays at the Resita Mosque youth group. Um, we go and, you know, we interact with Muslims, we talk about Islamic stuff. So, of course, and every Friday, family nights, too, at night, um, we talk about at the Resita Mosque, we interact with Muslims. The Sheikh, he talks to everybody, and you know, that's just great. So, um, what you're supposed to do when interacting a group with the Muslims, um, be friendly and make sure you don't let anyone in the group feel left out. Of course, when you're interacting with Muslims and you know a lot of information, you just want to like, you want to talk the whole time and you want to tell everybody everything, like, um, Islamic, all this stuff, like, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, like, um, of course, be friendly when you do it, like smile, be happy, and also not that, um, you have to pay attention to everybody else in the group. Make sure everybody gets the chance to talk. Um, don't let just one person talk or a couple of people and you guys, you know, kind of hog up the whole place. So let everybody get a chance to talk and um, that's just how to interact with a group of Muslims and be friendly about it. Yeah. When interacting with a group of Muslims, don't let anyone make fun of Islam or backbite about others. Just because a person is Muslim doesn't mean that they don't, like, make fun of something about Islam. Like, I don't like wearing the hijab because you don't get to, like, you know, do your hair whatever way you want or something like that. And don't let them backbite. You just tell them, like, on the day of judgment, you're going to have to eat that person's dead flesh meat. So, I mean, I think they're going to stop backbiting once they hear that. Yeah, um... You backbite about somebody and you find out you have to eat their meat, flesh, and it's kind of like forced into your mouth, like flesh, like not even cooked or anything, just flesh into your teeth and you're like biting into it, just like a dog. That just, disgusting. You're, I think you'll like just start gagging when you hear this. So I would just stop backbiting, then nothing bad will happen to you. Um, next, when joking. Okay, you know everybody likes to joke. Always make... Of course, it's good to make people smile. You can joke around. And it's a good deed to please a lot. As long as your jokes, you know, as long as your jokes um, don't hurt the other person's feelings and don't go, like, against Allah's rules and as long as they don't contain bad things. So if you're joking around with somebody and you're like, oh, my God, look at you. You're so dirty. That's might be funny to you, but not funny to the other person. So that's not really... Like, if both of you don't laugh in the conversation, it's not really a joke that's not really nice. So you shouldn't say it to other people. Um, always make sure your um, jokes are, you know, not haram or halal, as you can say. Just, you know, make sure they're not bad. And make sure they, they're not, like, um, they don't talk about anything bad. And make sure they're just good jokes. It's always good to make somebody yeah, laugh. Like like what she said don't joke around with your friends like you can joke around with them but if you think it's gonna like hurt their feelings like even if you're just joking sometimes they don't take it as a joke like or if it's just gonna like annoy them like that's not even funny kind of joke then like don't say it just like if, if it hurts them and you see that it hurts them like quickly apologize that's the thing is like or just try not to say the joke at all yeah if you really want to say the joke but you're afraid to hurt their feelings just keep it in because you know when you hurt their feelings it cause a lot of problems so you just don't say the joke <laughs> when okay okay when you're talking to a non-muslim about islam um i know friends you know teenagers they don't really talk to non-muslims about their religion it's just you don't when you hang out with your friends not a lot of people talk about their religion unless they're both muslims um but what you're supposed to do like do a muslim um, talk to a non-Muslim about Islam is, you know, clearly explain to them that whatever you know about Islam, if you don't know, like, try to answer their questions. Because, I, you know, um, a lot of non-Muslims, they have questions about Islam. And, you know, they always they always ask, like, even the simplest thing, like me, I wear my scarf. And they're like, um, why do you wear your scarf? Why do you wear that on your head? You know, just 
be nice about it. Don't, you know, be so aggressive and, you know, just be nice and answer their questions. Tell them why. And if they have any questions, if you don't know why, try to help them answer it. And, you know, you get good deeds for it. So that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, like what she said, when you're talking to non-Muslims about Islam, don't insult them if they start talking about your religion. Like, for instance, if they say something and they're, they're like, asking you the question, like, like, um, for instance, like, why do you wear that thing on your head or something like that? And they're talking about the hijab. Don't start, like, saying rude words to them and stuff. They just, like, ask you the question. They want to know why you wear it on your head. Like, Yeah, because, you know, sometimes people really don't know if it's, you know, a serious thing or not funny. So, you know, they just ask away. So just tell them, you know, calmly and tell them why. Mm -hmm. um, when learning about Islam, a lot of people, you know, they know their religion, but some people are still learning. You know, some converts, when they enter Islam, that's a good thing, um, they still learn. And we, even if you're not a convert, you're just some, you know, just normal Muslim. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, uh, what's where your name? What's you your name from? and where are you calling from? My name is Heidi and I'm from uh, Texas. Assalamu alaikum, Heidi. What would you like to, you know, ask us today or any comments about our show? Um, I had a question um, about for the joking part when you were talking yeah. about. Is it haram to be sarcastic about Islam? Um, it depends, you know, sometimes how you be sarcastic, if it's like still a nice joke, like you're just being sarcastic, but being nice, sometimes they don't understand if you're being sarcastic or not, and might actually be offended by it. But if you tell them nicely and tell them, if you accidentally told them your sarcastic joke and tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, I think they'll understand. But if you know if it's kind of like the words itself, gonna hurt their feelings, um, you, I think you should just keep it to yourself. Okay. So, thank you, and I love your show, too. So, it's a lot of good information. Thank, thank you, you, Heidi. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so, thanks, Heidi, for that call. And um, next, um, like we said, when you learn about Islam, learn about Islam to strengthen your faith. And, you know, um, and your relationship with Allah. Every time you learn more and more about Islam, your iman gets stronger, your faith. And, you know, your relationship with Allah, that even gets more stronger, which is, of course, pretty much the reason, half the reason we're here, just for our relationship to be um, strong with Allah so, you know, we can be great Muslims and, inshallah, go to the Jannah. Yeah. When learning about Islam, don't learn with the intention of showing off your religious um, knowledge. Like, like... Even though you know about Islam, but you're going to learn like more. Like for instance, um, at school they teach you about the religion of Islam, and you already, if you're a Muslim and you already know about Islam, like don't go and show off like, oh yeah, I'm Muslim and I know everything. Like it's not like that. And and when sometimes they have the schools, don't act like just because you know something, you know everything. Like you're st you don't know everything. You're gonna learn more, so don't show off what you know. Yeah, because, you know, some people, when we go to, you know, youth groups and stuff, they, 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 they know a lot of information. And, of course, that's the greatest thing. But don't, like, you know, try to show it off so much and tell everybody, like, oh, my God, I know all of this. Like, it's kind of like the same thing as when you pray. You know, when you pray really good and everybody's like, oh, look, look, he knows how to pray really good, mashallah. Don't show off. And don't, like, learn all the information just because to show off. You're supposed to pray and you're supposed to know information so Allah can be pleased with you. Not because, you know, you could show off. Oh, look at me. I'm such a great Muslim. So that's the point. Yeah. Um, when visiting a friend, um, let your friend know that you're going to visit them. And um, before entering their house, ask permission and say, as alaikum, or if they're not Muslim, you know, greet them as hi. Um, okay, you know, there's a lot of people, like, instead of calling you before you're, um, they go to your house, you know, they just ring the doorbell, and you're like, I wonder who that is, and then 
you know, you open the door and you're like, hi, I wasn't expecting it. You know, it's just great to call before because you don't know if they're having problems. You don't know if they're even at their house. You don't, they might be a, across the country and you might not know. So you can't just barge in and, you know, just go to their house. Um, it's also, it's always good to call before just in case, you know, they might not, that time they might, they can't have you or something or they may be, you know, having other guests or something else. So it's al always good, you know, to um, call and just ask permission. And when you do go there and they say yes, um, always greet them nicely and wait till they um, let you, like, they greet you and they let you get in, enter their house and always have manners, of course. Yep. When visiting a friend, don't look like when you're in their room or something, don't go and look through all of their stuff. Like, like when you're in their room, for instance, and you're like talking to them, don't just get up and go like dig through their drawers and stuff. Because I bet you like if they were at your house or anybody was at your house, you wouldn't want them touching all of your stuff and like going, yeah. oh yeah, I like this and I want this and stuff. It's like, and it's also the fact that when you ask for something, they don't want to be rude and say no, even though it's their thing. So, like, don't go looking through their stuff. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, when they enter your house and then you let them go in your room, of course, and you guys like to talk and they start touching stuff. I don't think if you were at, if they were at your house or you were at their house, I don't think they would like you touching their stuff. So, don't yeah. touch theirs. Um, also, when you're eating. I know when someone tells you have manners when you're eating, okay, okay, I'll close my mouth. I won't talk with my mouth open. Um, make sure not only before those manners, but the real ones, say bismillah before you eat. Always say bismillah. Because, you know, sometimes you never know what you're eating. Um, some, Of course, if it's your food, always say bismillah just to thank Allah. Bismillah, when you say it before you're eating, doesn't only mean thanking Allah. Bismillah is actually a really big word. You always say it before you do anything, and eating is one of those big ones. Um, when you eat and you say Bismillah, not only does um, you're thanking Allah for your food, Allah will always make sure that you have food by saying Bismillah. And, you know, you're always, um, if there's, you know, maybe food poisoning or something bad in your food, Allah will always make sure that's gone and it's perfectly healthy, good food to eat if you just say bismillah i mean it's not even that hard say bismillah always before you eat you and um joke. if you always eat with your right hand of course i mean sometimes you're left-handed but eating is just one of those things you have to do with your right hand the shaitan he eats with his left hand so always eat with your right hand yeah and um also um if you know somebody who doesn't have that much food and you have food always 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 share share with them share food with them because you know first of all you get a lot of good deeds and Allah he he gets pleased by that you know you share food with people first of all when you need something they will help you and not only that you know Allah pleases you and make sure you have plenty of food so always you know share food eat with your right hand and say bismillah before you eat yeah don't when eating don't eat when you're standing up because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like when he was eating, he said, uh, he said that while you're eating, you don't stand up, just sit down and don't eat with your left hand, of course, like what she said. And always make a dua before you eat. So, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, you guys out there, if you guys have any questions about our little topics, you guys feel free to call and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Um. Um, now we're going to be talking about before entering the bathroom. Um, say, Allahumma a'udhu bika min al wa khaba'il. Um, and enter with your left foot. The reason you say this little dua is because when you enter the bathroom, the bathroom is actually, you know, the home of the shaitan. And there's a lot of jinn in there, like little shaitans. And you know, when you're using the bathroom or taking a shower, sorry to say this, but they're actually looking at you. And I know you do not like even invisible, you don't like anybody looking at you when you're using the bathroom. So when you say that, um, the jinn, they don't look at you, and you know, you feel good to use the bathroom. So um, just say that, and you, of course you enter with your left foot. Everything in the sound we always do with our right. So either left, right foot, or right hand. So 
always do with your left because you know how the chaton is kind of, I mean, the um, bathroom is kind of a dirty place, kind of the chaton's little house. So always enter with your left foot. Um, yeah, enter with your left foot so you can just be safe. Yeah. Before entering the bathroom, don't go in with a Quran, like the actual Quran or or anything that says Allah's name on it, like a little necklace or a little bracelet or something that has like the Quran on it or the Kaaba or like um, any of that, or especially Allah's name on it. Don't go into the bathroom with that. Like, yeah. Yeah, because you know sometimes when you're in the bathroom and you know it's going to be a little while, you, um, you either take your phone in there or a book or something. If you do... We're not telling you that it's bad. We're just saying that make sure it doesn't say, like, you know, anything Islamic on it. There's no, you know, Quran. There's no du'as. There's no Prophet Muhammad's name on it or no Allah's name on it. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Hello. Um, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Hannah and... I'm calling from Orange County. Hi, Hannah. Um, so what would you like to ask us, or what would you like to say? What's the question? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. She I'm gets shy. Okay. It's okay. Uh, her question, uh, she eating the lollipop in her hand. She said that she's standing and eating her lollipop. She said it's okay. Okay, um, um, it is haram to actually eat when you're standing up, but if it's, like, you know, candy, lollipop, it's fine. It's okay. That's not haram. It's only like if you have, like, a plate and, you know, like, rice and food in your hand, then that's not okay. But if, you know, if it's, like, just a lollipop or candy or chocolate, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. That's a lot here. This is her question, but she gets shy. Is that <laughs> it's a lot okay. very good program. Wa <laughs> alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. So, um, like we were saying, um, before entering, so, yeah, before you enter, I know a lot of people, they take, you know, things with Allah's name, and a lot of people, you know, have necklaces or bracelets with Allah's name, Prophet Muhammad, always make sure you don't have that in the bathroom. You see, you're getting bad deeds just for g entering the bathroom with that on. So, always, always make sure you don't have that. And now, um, our last one, before leaving the bathroom, say Ghafranak and leave the bathroom with your right foot. So like we said, when you enter the bathroom, you um, you say, Allahumma a'udhu bika min al-khubti wal khaba'ith, and you enter with your left. Since you're leaving and you're entering a clean place, you say Ghafranak, which is mean, you know, thank you for, you know, using the bathroom well, and, you know, you never know what will happen, and you just say, you leave with your right foot, because that's the clean one. When leaving the bathroom, keep it clean and always flush the toilet, which is like whenever you have any like like any extra paper towels after drying your hand or toilet paper, always throw that away and always flush the toilet because I don't think the person before you, I mean after you like wants to clean up after you. So. Yeah, would you like it if somebody went in your bathroom and did that to your property? No, because then you'd be cleaning it up. So, you know, don't throw your, um, your trash on the ground or somewhere so somebody else would have to pick it up and um that was our show today um always remember to donate to i mean to our um p.o box which will be on the screen shortly and or go to www.imeantv.com and um thank you for watching our show always remember to donate we need your help and thanks thank you